In today's podcast we discuss Faces of Beth by Carver Pike, Sam and Remy Fargo series by Clive Cussler. Also on the podcast is the term R is for railroading and Jim Bob Johansson talks about the Quipper and the Remor Hayes. Now recording. The following podcast may have adult humor. Swear words. In you windows of a adult nature. Making fun of me. <laughs> That's a given. Everybody looks forward to that. But just know that you have been warned. Hey, this is Richard from the Unseen Critics with... Jesse from the Unseen Critics. And you can find us... Wherever you listen to your podcasts. Jesus Christ. I love that. I just love how that has become a thing. Everyone, the only one that hasn't done it yet is Mitch, I think. No, he's done it. He's done uh, it in the in the. Steven's good at it. Steven's actually good at mimicking things, I've realized. Yeah, he is. And this is all going in the podcast, by the way. By the way. Uh, yeah, hey, he's everybody. Yeah. He's got an ego. Welcome to the Blind Nights. As always, I am Richard, and with my co-host... Jesse Robert. Yeah, or am I <laughs> your co-host? Or we're we both uh, co-hosts? Well, I think we're both co-hosts. Because if one person was a co-host, that means like someone's better than the other, and we never, we're never equal, yeah. I think. I'm not better than anybody else. Except Mitch. I am a little bit better than Mitch. Oh, everyone is. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Yeah, but, you know... It, seriously, it's all... you guys... <laughs> it's all good. Um, we're here with the Blind Knights, and I don't know about you, Jesse, but I was actually wanting some warmer weather, and I don't know why Jim Bob wanted us to come up here to the freaking Arctic. It's it's cold. It is cold. It's actually, uh, in the real world, I know we're in the Arctic, but in the real world where I'm recording at, it's 45 degrees right now, so it is kind of cold. Oh, we yeah. actually got a frost today. Did you? That's what we call South Georgia snow. When the ground <laughs> frost, we call it South Georgia snow. <laughs> but, um... You know, crazy, uh, though. He, he is. Uh, he is about a hill... Huh. He kind of really is a hill billy, you know? Because he is like a hill dwarf. You get yeah. it? Hill yeah, billy. yeah, 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 yeah. It took you a while, you know. If I got to explain it, it's not funny. <laughs> but, uh... We are uh, in the Arctic today for uh, our creatures uh, that Jim Bob has for us. And, you know, um, but before we get there, we want to talk about some books and, you know, get up near the fire and warm up while you read. Uh, Jesse, I want to what, apologize uh, at first if my voice sounds a little nasally because I do have a cold that kind of sounds ridiculous. Well, it's because like, you I, got sick up here in the Arctic. Thank you, Jim yeah. Bob. Thanks, Jim Bob. I like it better like when my voice is like hoarse and all gruff. I don't like sounding like a nasally nerd. Like today's book review. <laughs> I got you. I got you. And Jim Bob even has a book for us to uh, to review, but we'll go over that. Um, is he going to review but, it? Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, God. Uh, he, he, he talked to me about it. Uh, but what, uh, what book do you have for us and for everybody else to check out? Wow. I am going to review, um, oh my God, what is the title? We don't know. That's why we asked you. The author is Carver Pike. Oh, The Many Faces of Beth. And it's about this guy. You know you know how, well, you're not married, but you know when you've been in relationships before, right? Yeah. You know how if you get in like a serious relationship, you kind of meet the family? Well, the main character of this book got married to a woman named Beth and has to deal with her family living with them. And her family is a bit odd. And I'm mm. not going to tell you the twist, but I'll tell you off the podcast because I don't know if you'd ever read it, but I'm not going to say it on the podcast to spoil, but right. awesome book. The twist like is kind of phenomenal. And you find out about it halfway through the book and then the rest of the book is just batshit crazy once you know what's going on. I got it at Christmas. It was actually a Brian Keene recommended it in his newsletter. 
and it was only two dollars. Oh, yeah. It was a it's a it's it's a phenomenal book. Five stars, easy, awesome, and I definitely want to read more Carver Pike. But just when you I'm see assuming, the uh, from more Kindle. basket deals with, yeah. Just God. if you when you you see what this poor bastard deals with, you're like, how the fuck would you deal with this? And is it really worth it? I, I'm guessing since you have read this book, Richard uh, would not deal with this. When you figure out the twist, though, no, I wouldn't either. Uh, uh, yeah, I definitely got to go check that out then. I wouldn't deal with uh, it either. Hell, yeah, when I tell you, do you want me to tell you the twist <laughs> off the show or? Uh, let me look up the book and then you can okay. tell me. Um, okay. But uh, my book is, um, oh, I'm sorry. Is that all that you wanted to talk about the book? Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, in case you do read it, I won't swear. Gotcha. My book is not necessarily a book, but is instead a series. Uh Um, I can't remember the name of the first one, but I want to think it's something called like Solomon's Gold or Solomon's Treasure or something like that. Um, it's the Sam and Remy or Remy Fargo series by Clive Cussler. Have you ever I've read heard any of, Clive of those? Cussler, but I've never read anything from him. Um, I heard you're probably name. you're probably more familiar with the Numa files that he does. Um, yeah, I've Dirt heard Pit of that. novels. I, I I don't like the Dirt Pit books. Um, I've tried. Is, don't is like there them. anything in particular why, or just you don't like? Them? Not really anything that I can just put on except it's a little overpowering, I guess. Oh. Um, it's been so long since I've tried to read one that I there's really can't like remember. a shit ton of those, isn't there? I think he writes yeah. it with a son now or something. I think so. Um, in fact, I think he may have started writing the Sam and Remy Fargo books with his son as well. But what I really like about them is they're like <coughs> treasure hunters, but not to keep the treasure. You know, oh. they give it to, like, the museums and things like that, and people try to track them down. It's it's almost like a form of archaeology, which I just I just love. You know, archaeology yeah. and, you know, discovering secrets and all from past um, dynasties and, you know, past civilizations. Yeah. But anyway, they were like a um, software mega company or whatever, and he sold it, and that's how he finances all his stuff, of course. You know, but anyway, um, really good books. And what I really like about them is that Clive Cussler will appear in the books one way or another. Okay. You know, is like, it like a thing where you have to spot like how he, how he appears? Um, he usually like will say his name. Um, uh-huh. uh, and I don't know. A lot of people hate that in their views I like that it. I read. It doesn't I bother think me. it's really That's cool. Doesn't bother me. Yeah, I I think it's really cool it's now. Just, like, it's more real. I feel like. Yeah. Um. Now you've read a lot of Stephen King. I don't think it would work for Stephen King. Um. Except no. for you know in um, the Dark Tower series that worked there, but he worked it in to where it made sense, and it wouldn't work for every author. But these books, it really works with. Maybe and, it will work in the Bill Hodges series. I'm thinking because that's kind of real world, isn't it? Uh. Yeah. Um, and, and I like that series as well, but it's, it's one of those little tweaks that I like from Clive Cussler. It's like a tweak, um, like a little gnaw. I, en- I enjoy that stuff. Like a lot of, yeah, I, a lot of horror authors, like in the small time, they'll mention like other authors and stuff. And it's fun if you, like, you know, the inside of like who that is. Like I enjoy that right. stuff. And, um, it, it just, it just works. And <laughs> You know, there's really nowhere, no way else to explain it other than, hey, it it works. You know, um, but uh, here comes Jim Bob. He's. I just want to say, like, Dirk Pitt. Just from what I've read, like the synopsises I've read over my in my life, reminds me of like if James Bond was a treasure hunter. Is that right? Uh, I can't like, really there's say. There's always different I, women. I feel like. I, I can't really say because I have. Okay. I've only tried to read the one. Okay. And, I, and honestly, you know how I am. I'm not sure if I even finished it. Um, but it's just I did finish it. It was about the Titanic. I can't remember what oh, it was okay. called. That is but, one thing uh, that hasn't happened to me yet this year. I haven't DNF'd a book because I didn't want to finish it, which is good. Yeah, and I just I didn't. Well, actually, I didn't I like how stopped an audio book, but I'm going to go back to it. I think. 
Well, good for you. But um, I, I didn't really like how Clive did the the Titanic aspect of it. But mm. I mean, it, I like your Titanic that you were sharing over the weekend. Yes, I share a bunch of those. I love that. I love think it was that neat. era. Like that. Um, you know, but uh, here comes Jim Bob, and uh, that's an I'll awful little to book that he's got. Uh, hey, Jim Bob, how are we doing? Nice money. We know it's you. Saying hi to you. Saying hi to who? You. Jim Bob? Yeah, we that's said me. hi, Jim Bob. Yeah, we know it's uh, you. We're saying, okay. what's your book for us? Uh, I didn't know you read one. I like picture books. Oh, okay. See right here? It's uh -huh. it's about a kitty. It's called uh it's by a famous um physician. His name is Dr. Suez and the book is called Um The Hat on the Cat. Okay. Have you ever read it? I've read a book called The Cat in the Hat, but not the cat the hat on a cat. Oh, that's what it's called. Cat in the hat. No, I, like I love that book when I was a kid. I think he wears a hat. Oh, well, that'd be kind of It is kind of funny book. But, yeah. Um, but see, right here is the pretty little kitty. Look at him. He, look. He, I'm blind, Jabob. I can't see the kitty. Oh, well, that's okay. Just look right here. I here's can't see, kitty. Jabob. Oh. Uh, nothing? Nothing. Not even women, which is sad. So, uh... Or cute little read, animals. You can't read picture books. I can listen to that book, though, someone reading it to me. Oh, I'm gonna try listening to the book. Uh, okay. I, I don't hear nothing. It's not Well, no, when I, was, when I was little, my parents would read it to me. They'd hold the book and read it to me. Ah... Uh. Um, okay, uh... It'd be like a bard telling stories. Oh, that works. I go to the barter every once in a while, get a haircut, you know, and talk to them. But, um, yeah. Uh, I got some, some animals here. Uh... Did you like the um, book, though? Um, yeah. Okay. I didn't hear anything about it, but, um... I'm going to believe you about it talking to me. I'll keep hoping that it'll talk to me. So so you're the one that made us come to the Arctic? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, it's very cold here. I got a cold. Well, that's because you played with your tally whacker over the air conditioner thing. Don't tell anyone that. Oh, I'll cut this out of the recording with some scissors. So, what um, are the cre what creatures you have first? Do you still have your invisible dog? I can't find him. I think he ran away. Every uh, once in a while, I'll feel something wet on my leg, and then uh, then me and my wife will look around for him for a little while. I didn't know you had a um, wife. Oh yeah, she's a very pretty woman. She's um, I call her uh, well, her bus really sucks. You know, um, she's like a. What did you call it? Suck, sucky bus or something? Oh, that's you married her? That's right. You married the succubus, yes. Yeah. We get along really good. We got like 37 children now, I think. Wow. I, I'm not sure, but oh, I know. So what are these creatures you have for us? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, see, you're, you're railroading me there, Jesse. Sorry, that's the I'm, letter, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the letter of the, of the week is uh, railroad. Yeah, yeah. that's the letter. You know what that means? That would mean like, when when a game master forces the players to go a certain way that he wants them to go and isn't very good at hiding the fact that he's doing it. This is true. Sometimes I railroad my wife. That's a different definition, though. We'll talk about <laughs> I bet that she likes later. It. Yeah, well, we do have like 37 kids. <laughs> but anyway, um, have you ever heard of a uh, quipper? Um, I no. know you. I know you said you can't see, uh, but um, I'd let you. Well, here, I got him in this here aquarium. Uh, no, don't put your finger down in there because he'll eat it off. Uh, oh wow! It, 
you ever heard of a piranha? Yes. Uh-huh. You know that they they live on that website Amazon. So you're you know saying one? you could buy piranhas on Amazon? Well, ain't that where they live? Anyway, they they like the cold. Um, these here quiffers, they're like a freshwater piranha, and they uh they eat flesh. Yeah, they really vicious creatures. Why don't you want one of those? Like, why do you have that as a pet? Well, I don't have a mother in law. <laughs> that was a good one. That, that's what that's why the fish likes me. <laughs> anyway, um It'll never bite you? Never. Well, um there's just one time, but that's a different story. That was uh, another one of the railroading things, you know. Oh, okay. But, so uh, what can you tell us about the quipper? Um, they're a fish, and they like to eat meat, and they live up in the northern cold waters. Uh, they're very weak, though. Um, when they bite you, uh, it's like they get a, a plus five to bite you or something. Mm-hmm. And But they only cause, like, one point of damage. Well, it's really crazy about them. Um, here, listen to this. Uh, I'm going to put a little some blood here in the water. You hear that fishy going? Get it, yep. little fishy. Yep. Uh, they go through a blood frenzy, and um, they get advantage on attacks then. It's like a swarm of them. Could you imagine like a hundred of them coming at you? Well, that would kill you. It could. Now that he's all calming down now. Uh, but um, the other one can't find him either. It's called a, a rimmer haze. Have you ever heard of that? No. Well, the the Rimmer Haze, or as some educated people call it, the Remor Hodge. Yeah. I, don't know, I like Rimmer Haze better. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're uh, they're very big, uh, but yet the reason I can't find mine so much is because they like to burrow under the ground. Uh, they got a lot of tough skin, and um, they're really hard and healthy. They're healthy, but they're hard to kill. Um, and they're worth a, a lot of experience when you fight them. Okay. Okay. Uh, but the the problem is, whenever you go to hit them, it causes you damage as well if you're up next to them. In that they're uh, melee stuff. Um, Mele- I, melee. Uh, you like to lay what? It's called melees. That word is how you say that word. May you lay what? That's the way you, you say that word. Oh, oh, is that not that whole uh, so word and yeah, sword? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, got you there. Um, but th- their bite's really uh, strong. You get like a a plus eleven to bite. Ooh. Um, and their Probably average fish. Oh, yes, lots of fishes. That'd be like lots of fishies. You're like, here, fishy, fishy. No fishy, no fishy. You know what I mean? But anyway, <laughs> um, you get like an average of 40 piercing damage per bite. But also, you get like an average of 10 fire damage as well, because these creatures, they're like kind of made of fire. Um, like their internal temperature is like a fire. You know, it keeps them warm up here in the cold. They like to hunt like elk and bears and deers and um, giants like to catch them when they're young and make like uh, little puppies, that are, like guard dogs out of them. And uh, they, like I said, they burrow under the ground and they lower their temperature so it doesn't melt stuff. And then when they feel like vibrations, like, um, you know, somebody walking or stomping on the ground, then they come up and they eat you. Then you'll be it, you know, because you won't, then you have to get poopied out of their, you know, their holes and everything. And while well, you're would, inside would of them. you would die instead of living through all that. Well, the chances are that you could die because once it bites you, it swallows you. <laughs> that reminds me of this time with, oh, um, uh, yeah. I, Is that sorry. a story about you and your wife? 
Uh, yeah, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> Where he and, sucked you, we'll say? Uh, I played the sixth. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I played the sixth right there. Uh, but while you're inside this here, uh, creature, you, you take like 21 acid damage. Yeah, as it, uh, digests Jesus. you. It's pretty vicious. How um, did you capture one of those? Well, I found him as a little baby, and I gave him a name of Spot, um, because I can't never spot him, you know. But he he's really nice and playful. He likes to jump up from below you and not you not know it, and it surprises you. Well, I hope he doesn't hurt you. Oh no, he don't want I'll whoop his butt. But, uh, that's, uh, that's the creatures that I have. Oh, uh, I think here he comes. I feel the ground vibrating is underneath me. Ooh, I, I was about to ask you if you saw him. <laughs> but you, you, you're not even looking at me. But that's okay. I'm that's looking okay. at you. I hear your voice. I turn toward your voice. Oh, is that how you do it? You got, like, that there bat, um. Yeah, I'm like Batman. Sona R stuff. Yeah, yeah that's of. that's pretty cool. You know, like uh, that um, Daredevil or something. That's a good movie. Yeah. yeah but cool. anyway, um, here he comes and uh, he's vicious. Um, come here, Spot. You smell him. You can feel the fire from him. You stay over there, Spot. And it's it's warmed up a little bit over here now because he's like he made a fire. To uh, he better if he knows what's good for him. I ain't got a paw and all neither. <laughs> but um, anyway, I guess we better get on out of here. Uh, Richard's like hitting me upside the head or something for some reason. Well, bye, Jim Bob. It was nice talking to you. All right, buddy. We'll uh, well, we no. Um, how about I hear you later? Did that work? Or what well, do you can uh, say you'll, you'll you'll see me later. That's okay. Okay, I'll see you later. What, what I'll do see you blind later. people? But hey. I said the same. I just said the same thing. Uh, Richard does that too, but he's an idiot. <laughs> Better you say uh, that than me. Why? Because he'd get mad and probably tell Katie. Who? Oh, you mean Katai? Katai. See you, buddy. You know what's cool? Podcasts. You know what's not cool? No podcast. Check out all the podcasts over here at blindknowledge.com. This podcast you're listening to right now is a featured Blind Knowledge podcast. This episode is brought to you by the Knights of the Braille and is made possible through the support of viewers such as you. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to get all of the latest information and episodes. Thank you.